Periodontitis Part 2. 1. Classify the severity and extent based on currently measurable extent of destroyed and damaged tissue attributable to periodontitis. 2. Assess complexity of disease, through factors that may determine complexity of controlling current disease and managing long-term function and aesthetics of the patient's dentition. Goals of staging. Stage I. Initial periodontitis. Borderland between gingivitis and periodontitis and represents the early stages of attachment. Developed periodontitis in response to persistence of gingival inflammation and biofilm. Loss. Stage 2. Moderate periodontitis. Represents established periodontitis. Careful evaluation of the stage 2 patient's response to standard treatment principles is essential. Stage 3. Severe periodontitis with potential for additional tooth loss, significant damage to the attachment apparatus and, in the absence of advanced treatment, tooth loss may occur. Deep periodontal lesions that extend to the middle portion of the root and whose management is complicated by the presence of deep intrabony defect, furcation. Stage 4. Advanced periodontitis with extensive tooth loss and potential for loss of dentition. Periodontitis causes considerable damage to the periodontal support and may cause significant tooth loss. Presence of deep periodontal lesions that extend to the apical portion of the root. Secondary occlusal trauma. Staging. Severity. Measured by Cal at the site with greatest loss or evidence of radiographic bone loss, tooth loss. Complexity of the management. Measured by probing depth, pattern of bone loss, furcation lesions, tooth mobility, number of remaining teeth. Extent. 1. Localized, less than 30% teeth. 2. Generalized, greater than or equal to 30% teeth. 3. Molar incisor pattern. Goals of grading. 1. Estimate future risk of periodontitis progression and responsiveness to standard therapeutic principles. 2. Estimate potential health impact of periodontitis on systemic disease and the reverse, to guide systemic monitoring and co-therapy with medical colleagues. Grading. Using direct measure. By bone loss slash attachment loss. Using indirect measures. By bone loss slash age. Case phenotype. Risk factors smoking diabetes. The diagnosis can be confirmed with the case definition which is either. 1. Interdental cal detectable at greater than or equal to two non-adjacent teeth or 2. Buccal or oral cal greater than or equal to 3 and with pocketing greater than 3. Um detectable at greater than or equal to two adjacent teeth. Advanced lesion. As the plaque constituents continue to extend more subgingivally. The integrity of J is increasingly damaged. The epithelial cells separated and the attachment to the tooth completely break down. J proliferate into CT and down onto root surface, apically as the fibers destroyed. The epithelium is now converted to pocket epithelium. Inflammatory infiltrate extended laterally and apically into CT. Plasma cells dominate and constitute greater than 50% of cell types. The following irreversible changes occur. Loss of periodontal CT attachment. Apical migration of J and formation of true periodontal line with pocket epithelium. Alveolar bone loss. Management. One phase I, supragingival scaling and subgingival debridement. Two phase two, surgical intervention, if needed. Three phase three, maintain as phase. One where cal is absent, the periodontium is considered intact. In these cases, other diagnoses such as clinical gingival health, biofilm-induced gingivitis, ornin biofilm-induced gingival pathologies must be considered. 2. When evidence of cal is present, the dialogic factors responsible for the loss of attachment must be subsequently identified. 3. There are cases in which cal is periodontitis factors. Non-periodontitis causes of cal include, but are not limited to traumatic tooth brushing, orthodontic-induced recession, in these cases, a diagnosis of periodontitis should not be considered. Non-periodontitis patients. Thanks for watching. Support us by likes and subscribes.